Heather, what's up? <laughs> Hi to you as well. Welcome back to another outfit workout. I'm Coach Sun. I'm Coach Cole. That's my name. <laughs> wow. Pretty sure, pretty sure. Brooklyn is hanging out here on the side. You probably can't see her. Um, we are going to be doing another 40 minute workout today. So you need either one weight, a dumbbell or a kettlebell. I'm going to be using a uh, kettlebell today. I think Coach Cool, I think that's his name, is going to be using a dumbbell over here. I was like trying to make a joke and then couldn't. I'll stick to what I'm supposed to be doing here. Um, <laughs> so looking at the movements, um, yeah, a kettlebell or a dumbbell is going to be just about the same. So we're going to start with the strength portion, which is going to take just about 12 minutes or so. Take a quick break and then we're going to transition to a little bit longer of a conditioning portion. Uh, two quick things though before we start getting going with the warm up. First thing is, uh, if you think that this is content that you would like, this is a 40 minute workout that you use one weight with. We also have 20 minute body weight workouts and a 10 minute core or abs, abs, abs workouts. So please go ahead, like this video and then subscribe to the channel. It makes a huge difference. And then the last thing is just that you're gonna notice that both Coach Cole and myself are out indoors. We're gonna be working out uh, and we're not wearing masks. We are in the middle of a pandemic. We are only doing this for the purpose of the video. Anytime either of us are indoors, we're working out or not, we're always wearing masks. Um, keeping everyone safe is a team sport, so we all have to do our part. So uh, we just ask that you do that as well as we get through these uh, kind of last months and the vaccinations really start rolling out. So with that being said, we're gonna get going. I'm gonna turn it over to Coach Cole and we're gonna get our warm-up started. Let's start with some arm circle space. So we'll go both arms, we'll go both arms at the same time. We'll swing forward for 10. Oh, my shoulders. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> lots of cracking. I don't know if you can hear that, but. Once you hit 10 forward, hit 10 backwards. Reverse, reverse. Once you hit 10 backwards, go for 10 across the chest. Slap yourself in the back. Switch which arm goes on top. I think this is maybe my second favorite right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done this before. I typically do these walking around the room. I'll take a step forward, then another step, but I don't want to walk off camera right now. Let's hit 30 jumping jacks. Feet out, feet in. I was in Dwayne Reed today. Thought I'd be coach. Can we guess why? Uh, Close. Valentine's Day stuff. Valentine's Day. I, I bought my first Valentine's Day item of the year tonight. <laughs> Please tell me. Please. <laughs> I don't know what it was. Yes. After 30 jumping jacks, 15 air squats. Feet where you squat, take it nice and slow. Nice big set of 15. It was two heart pillowcases. Two heart pillowcases? Like standard pillowcases? Yeah, for my bed. I have lots of good pillowcases. I love to pose my bed, but my it's not in the shape of a heart, it just has heart print. No, it's like heart print. You gotcha. I have some dog ones. I have pillowcases that are French bulldogs with hearts on it. Those are my favorite. That makes sense. Of pillowcases, do you think you have total? Eh, 12 or 13. Wow. That sounds I, like a lot to me. 12 or 13 cents a pillowcase. Yeah, they're just like fun to buy and they're super, it's like super cheap. Just like change them out all the time. How many sets of like sheets do you have? Like three. Alright, that's about. That's about what I have, give or take two. <laughs> what do you do with your sheets when you're washing them? Nothing, I just wash them and I put them back on. Oh, okay, I guess if you're washing them one day, it's fine. Yeah, just... All right, five inch arms, please, hands on the floor, walk it out, nice and tall. Down, push up. Walk it back in. I'm a big stickler for like white sheets and stuff, so I have to wash them all the time or else they just get. I used to. Not crisp white. Everything was, everything was on the, everything on the bed was white until Brooklyn came. Yeah, well, <laughs> it can't be white anymore. That got changed. Black fur everywhere. But I do love that, like, you're in a hotel bed. Yeah, it's such a good feeling. Everything's all white. 20 more 
right jumping jacks, a little bit more than breathing to finish it off, please. My mom never hears this, she'll probably cry, but I, when I wash my pillowcases, I iron them before I put them in the closet. So when you take them back out and put them on your pillows again, you have like that nice hotel brace in them. And mom always said as a kid that if I ever told her that I actually do it now, like, I don't want to go home anymore, she would like, never look at the end of it. I used to make fun of her for all the time. All right. Um, take about 30 seconds, 45 to breathe it out. Grab that kettlebell or dumbbell if you need to. Um, I will be talking about our strength today. We got six rounds of the swinging and squatting. <laughs> Target has some great Valentine's Day sheet sets if you want some more other set of sheets. Um, I was just thinking about it, yeah, so maybe I'll swing by there. Literally, like Target in the city. Yeah. What other Target would there be? Well, the Target in the cities are like. A lot smaller. Yeah, but they have like they have good bedding. I think a lot of like for like a lot of like college, college kids, yeah. Just buy new bedding every time they move in. That makes sense. But not playing that Brooklyn and uh six hundred dollar sheets that uh moved yet, but those seem nice as well. You never see it's all over this near city on the subway, it's like Brooklyn and it's like beautiful windows and stuff. I love that stuff. I can't keep control. Uh I'm a big fan of snow. Is that a sheet? Uh, it's, it's a home basics company. Oh, yeah. nice. I've never heard of it. My friend that works there will, will, will tell me time and time again that Snow's bedding is far superior to Brooklyn and it is Brooklyn and has a better advertising budget. They're better advertising. So, Snow, S N O W. Is that true or is that like. I don't know. Interesting. Let's go with it though. Alright. Um, Comment below what your favorite place to buy your bedding is. I bet you didn't think we would be there in the first five minutes of our workout today. But somehow, we got there. We are moving on. There we go. Strength today. We're going to work for 30 seconds. We're going to work for another 30 seconds. We're going to work for a final 30 seconds. And then we will rest for the fourth 30 seconds. So 90 seconds of work, 30 seconds of rest. Six rounds. All right? First movement. Left hand, single arm swing. Sponsor to grab his belt or his... Bell, bell or his dumbbell, his kettlebell or his dumbbell. He is swinging only by holding onto his left hand, hinging at the hips. Notice, it might be hard to see that from here on this side, with his right arm's coming up to guide that bell. Just keep his shoulders nice and square at the top since our weight um, is loaded only on one side. For the second 30 second window, he's gonna switch hands. He just switched hands to the right. I would love today if you could not put that kettlebell down for that whole first minute. Cool, whether we're swinging from the left to the right, um, or the right to the left, 30 seconds on each side. If you're feeling good, keep that kettlebell moving. Bring it right up into the goblet wrap. We are hitting goblet squats for the last 30 second window, all the way down, all the way up. He's keeping his heels nice and flat, his chest is nice and tall. He's finding the bottom of the squat for him. And he's making sure his knees aren't too close together. Well, his knees are coming right out over his toes in a nice little V direction. Awesome, 30 seconds left arm swings, 30 seconds right arm swings, 30 second goblet squats. Seconds to rest. Alright, pretty simple hinging and squat today. Six rounds, we'll get it done nice and fast. We'll get going in 30 seconds for the day. Clock's ready, love this. Twenty-five. Also, cooling mattress pads, super important. Cooling mattress pads. Yeah, way worth it. To plug in? No, it's just like there's like jelly gummy foam. It's like way cooler than like I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot today, so hopefully you're learning a little bit. I don't know if we were going to talk about good so much, but here Five, we go. Five, four, three, let's go left arm first. One, a thumb in the belt, we are swinging. Our next video will be Todd and I reviewing different winning sets. <laughs> Stay tuned for next week. Brooklyn in versus snow. <laughs> I mean, like, I would do it. We're going to get a bed in here somehow. Maybe we can get them to send us some? Yeah, send us some. 10 seconds, we're gonna switch right into that right hand. Three, two, one, and switch, still moving. So for these swings, when you're hinging at the hips, you're trying to think about keeping that arm, that forearm in particular, glued to your body as long as possible. So it's on my stomach, I'm opening up, opening up, opening up. Once I finally open the hips, then letting that arm come up. And then when you're coming down, don't rush it. Don't anticipate the weight coming down. 
Wait for it, wait for your arm to make contact with the body, and then hinge at the hip to come back down. Goblet squats in three, two, one. Here we go, goblet squats. So, let's remember a few things. One, squat stance is just about shoulder width. You're gonna have your toes turned out slightly. That weight's here in front of you. Still gonna be focusing on keeping that core nice and tight halfway. All the way down and all the way up. You keep the core nice and tight, you'll keep a neutral back in the beginning. If you don't keep that core tight, that's how you're gonna get that rounding in the back. You got rest coming up in three, two, one. All right. 30 seconds of rest, round one's done. We're going back into our swings. All right, back at it in 20 seconds. Left arm swing, it's coming back up in 10 seconds. Back in five, three, two, one. Here we go, 30 seconds of swings. You think most people know where they got their bed from? No, I don't. I think I got mine from Amazon Basics. I do like Amazon Basics. Super easy. I know Amazon's a little controversial, but they do exactly what they advertise to do when you buy things from them. We'll say that. Three, two, one. Good switch. Good, about 20 seconds ago, Coach Full was saying, first things first, your goal is gonna be trying to not put this down for the full minute. You get through that, trying to not put the weight down for the goblet squats either, so keeping on to it for 90 seconds. Which, if you've been doing your workouts, shouldn't be terrible. Three, two, one, goblet squats. When we're squatting right now, again, this is the strength portion of our workout, so you can squat nice and fast if you want to, but I don't need the world's fastest squats from us. We want some nice, pretty squats in the midfield. Good. I'm going to think about your feet on the floor right now. Where do you feel the weight? Do you feel some weight in your heel and towards the front of your foot? I would like you to feel more weight on the outside arch of your foot than the inside arch. Just keep those knees driving right out over those toes for another four, three, two, and rest. Good. All right, we got two rounds in. One more round, we're gonna be halfway. One of the hardest workouts ever is changing your DNA cover. Every time you're like getting in, you button it up, it's like you're like sweating my hands a bit. There doesn't really need to be a better way. There, I, we can put a man on the moon, but I still have to take me 20 minutes to put my duvet cover on. It's true, and then like one day it's already balled up again. Yeah. Three, two, one, and left arm swings. Ah, first world problems, I think is what they call that. Well, someone was asking me the other day, what makes our workout different than any other workouts? We're certainly getting different today. And I think that's it. We're talking about duvets, <laughs> iron arrow pillowcases, things like that. Switching arms in three, two, one. You know, everybody does it. Irish and polo cases? No. No. <laughs> that's, that's something that only I do. Um, you have to iron them before you put them like into your closet away. So I feel like ironed as they're folded there for a while. But everybody does change their sheets. Hopefully. Oh. If you don't change your sheets, probably try that. Life advice. We're pushing the goblet squats again. Four, three, two. Here we are. 30 seconds. Just to be clear, you fold them, you iron them just flat. So like when they come out of the dryer. And then you put them in the closet, perfectly flat. So when they come out of the dryer, 15 seconds, right? As long as they're fresh out of the dryer. Uh huh. You fold them, right, to put away. So like usually fold them in half a minute and a half. In half a minute and a half, maybe in half again, depending on where you're putting them. Three, two, one. 30 seconds off, halfway. Okay. There, cool. Once you have them folded to get put away, uh -huh. then you iron it. Oh wow. So that those creases are in it, so that when you unfold it, just put it on your pillow a while later. Uh -huh. It has that nice like hotel crease on the pillowcase. 15 seconds, we're back at it. 
I didn't really, I thought he hotel pillows had no creases except for where the seams are. They, you no, know, they have, a lot of them have like iron creases. Like a, yeah. Maybe I Oh, back at it. Three, two, one. About seven minutes into the workout tonight, we are still talking about pillowcases. <laughs> I guess the pandemic. If anyone really does iron your pillowcase after listening to this and is like super happy with how it looks when you put it on, let me know. It will make me so happy. It does look good. If anyone's still watching, <laughs> if you're still working out, <laughs> if you haven't grabbed your keys and ran to the store to buy new limbs already, switch arms in three, two, one. Halfway. On round four here, so if you hold on to that dumbbell or kettlebell so far, no more pointing down for the day. We proved we can do it. Stay in it. Three, two, one. Up into some squats. Here we go. We got that nice flat foot. Knees driving. Out. Ten seconds. Four, three, two, and one. Good. Thirty seconds off. Four down. Two to go. Probably a pretty good pace right now. Hold it right there for the rest of the straight today. Back at it in just about 10 seconds. Left arm coming up in five, three, two, one. Here we go. As we start our swings here, um, especially into the later sets of the day. Um, like Tal was talking about earlier, the more you use your hips, the less you have to use your arms and upper back. Right, your hips and legs are super duper strong. So, um, on the subject of arms, your hand needs to grab the kettlebell, all right? You don't want to let go of the kettlebell for obvious reasons. Todd's bell would probably fly and hit Brooklyn. That would be not a good day, all right? But you only need to hold on to that bell as tight as you need to to keep it in your hand. Switch hands in three, two, one. If we're someone in a workout like this where you hold on to a kettlebell for 90 seconds, um, in any way, shape, or form, we don't need a death grip on that kettlebell. You can relax your hand a little bit as long as you have a nice firm grip. That's something I catch myself doing a lot, is like squeezing the heck out of that kettlebell. There's no reason for me to tire my grip that much. Find some squats in five, four, three, two, right on up, right on down. So now as we're going into these squats, we're in our fifth round. Get a little bit of fatigue, maybe. It's a little easier when you're holding the weight in front of you in that goblet position, but you to stay upright, but you still also want to focus on keeping your core tight. Halfway, 15 seconds to go. Keep my core nice and tight as I sit down. Again, I'm gonna keep that back nice and neutral, coming all the way up. If I don't keep my core tight, that's when you're gonna experience this rounding that we're gonna not want to happen. Go ahead and relax. Oh, five rounds in, last round is coming up. Less than 30 seconds. Fifteen. So we got the last round coming up, just about ten seconds. We'll take a quick break for a couple of minutes, and then we're going to go into our conditioning. We got a new movement for you today, so that's something to look forward to. But first, swings right now. Last time, left arm swings, thirty seconds. Good, 15 seconds to go. Coach Full was saying about not having that death grip on the kettlebell or on your dumbbell. Um, sometimes when I'm teaching fundamentals, brand new athletes, so one of the drills I'll have them do, we're gonna switch in three, two, one. Switching to that right side is they'll do some Russian swings. So just bring it up to eye level like we are, but with both hands. And then I teach them to lightly let go and release. Coming back up, lightly let go and release. And the next progression is when we come up, they try to 
double tap it. So they try to tap the handle twice with their fingers. And then the last one is when they come up, they let go, they clap, and they regrip. Don't try any of that without instruction, but just to show, three, two, one, last time for goblet squats. Just to show that you don't need to have this death grip. And in fact, as you're coming up, if you're able to let go, clap, and regrip, again, don't try that without proper instruction, then you can have a really light grip on the kettlebell, uh, which is gonna save the forearm strength, particularly if there's other grippy parts of the workout, which is also gonna test your forearm strength. 10 seconds. You got goddess squats coming up for five, finishing it up in three, two, one. Nice job. All right, six rounds in. Very nice. Grab a drink, take a second. We're going to take about 60 or 90 second break here, and then we're going to start talking about uh, the conditioning, and in particular, we're going to be talking about Turkish kettles. We were talking about the letting go and clapping the kettlebell. I just like, saw like anybody, myself included, like in New York City apartment. Letting go of the kettlebell just like launching out the window. Yeah. Just right next to them because their apartment's small. And like someone on the street carrying the kettlebell, the kettlebell. Which, by the way, I've been walking and an air conditioner fell not five feet in front of me. Wow. How long was that? Uh, it was like three or four months. It was like right in the fall during our windy, really windy day. Uh, I'm walking on my way home from my home, like home rope. And it literally like smacked five feet in front of me. Like instead of hitting me in the shin. I was like, wow, no that's warning. lucky because it didn't land on my head. No warning. It just fell out of the window. No one else was around? People were on the street, everyone on the street was like jumped. Wow, yeah, that's crazy. crazy. So if you're near a window, don't let go of the back of the pedal bell. I'll tell you, I don't know, I've been coaching for six years, uh, definitely over 10,000 classes. I've coached a lot of local competitions. Only twice have I seen uh, an athlete eject a pedal bell. And it wasn't beginner athletes, it was more experienced athletes. I think beginner athletes would put a kettlebell down before, they're before they let their grip go. More experienced athletes that really know how to push themselves, think they can get a couple more reps before they lose it. But the one time it's just, I'm here and there's a, as, as there was a male, me, um, wasn't me though, but and then there was a female about that blue line and the guy was doing swings and just right when it got to eye level, it just flew and hit her in the back. That's crazy. It was really, it was scary too. Um, so yeah, things happen. Even if you think you're an experienced athlete, sometimes that's the... Everybody makes mistakes. <laughs> okay, uh, we got about 20 seconds. Hit that 90 second mark. I'm sitting here for a reason. I'm not just like... <laughs> Why not? I just decided to sit down for a couple minutes in the middle of class. Brooklyn's chilling, you're chilling. Oh, uh, if you need to sit down, take a seat. <laughs> you can talk about top sheets while you guys... <laughs> Do you use top sheets? I do not, which is super millennial of me. Um, but I despise top sheet, and it means I have to wash my new bake cover once a week. <laughs> All right. Moving fitness. on. Fitness. Back to fitness. So we're gonna be doing some Turkish get-ups. Uh, we're expecting that this is a refresher for a, a lot of you. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Coach Cole demonstrate step by step. So there's uh, a handful of steps that goes through the, this movement. I'm gonna be calling them out one at a time. He's going to do it, pause in that position, and then wait for me to say the next step. So he's gonna do one side, and then he's gonna do the other side. And then what's gonna happen is, um, actually no, let's not do this yet. Uh, we're, we're gonna talk about Turkish get last. There's two other movements I wanna talk about first. So the first movement should be familiar for us, it's doing some toe taps. So if you have a dumbbell, or if you have a kettlebell, it's just simply that you're tapping, tapping. You can start off slow as Coach Cole did, and then you can start putting a hop into it. We're gonna be doing 40 toe taps. So each foot counts as one, one, two, three, four, until you get up to 40. And then after you get done with 40 toe taps, we're gonna be doing five per side, 10 total of um, dumbbell plank drag. So what Coach Cole is gonna do, what you're always gonna be doing is reaching across your body, pulling the weight over reaching across the body, pulling the weight over, and then you're gonna do that, um, have nice wide feet in the back, a nice wider base, because when you do pick up um, one arm, right now I have four points of contact if I was on the ground, pick up one arm, I only have three points of contact, so if I have a wider base with the feet, it's gonna be more stable. All right, so we're gonna have this combo of 40 toe taps, 10 plank drags. 40 toe taps, 10 plank drags, because the format we're gonna be doing today is four minutes of work, one minute of rest. Four minutes of work, one minute of rest. And then we're going to do the same movements, but now three minutes of work, 
30 seconds of rest, three minutes of work, 30 seconds of rest. So the second, top, the second combo is gonna be those toe taps and plank drags. First one's gonna be these Turkish get-ups. Coach Cool's gonna demonstrate one on each side. And then after that, when we actually start the clock, I'm gonna be talking and I'm gonna be doing it and talking it through at the same time. So if this is newer for you, stick with me. If this is not newer for you, you can be with Coach Cool, which means just moving at your own pace. So first things first, we're gonna start on our right-hand side here. Coach Cool's gonna get the weight pressed up. His other arm is going to be out at about a 30, 35 degree angle on the ground. And he is going to be rolling over and pressing up onto his elbow. So he's going to uh, have his right leg up. So the leg of the same side as the weight is going to be up. He's using that leg to press and roll to come up to the elbow. And then we're just going to be on the elbow first. And then we're going to pause there. Next step is straightening the arm. Oh, this arm? It's this. Yes. I'm like, my arm's straight over. <laughs> Great, next step up is pulling up your hips. So hips come up, nothing else moves. And next step is gonna be the leg that's extended. His left leg is gonna come down and under him into this lunge position, holding that position. Next one is gonna be sitting up into a lunge position. And then the last one is gonna be then going ahead and stepping up to standing all the way. To come back down, we're gonna reverse that order. So first things first, left knee comes back down to the ground. Pause there. Next thing is, your arm is gonna come out to the side, not behind you, but out to your side. Great. That left leg is now gonna come forward, hips are gonna stay high. Hips are gonna come down to the ground. Now we're gonna come down to the elbow. And now we're gonna come all the way down to the ground. Great. So we're gonna go ahead and switch sides. If you want, you can do it with us this time. If you wanna wait until the next time, that's fine. We're gonna have the weight in our left hand. So the left knee is gonna be up. Right leg is at about 30 to 45 degree angle. And first thing we're gonna do is roll over and come up to our elbow and pause. Now we're gonna to go to a straight arm. Hips come up. Right knee comes back. Uh, standing, well, sitting up into this lunge position and going ahead and standing up. Now we're gonna reverse that order completely. Right leg comes down. Arm comes out to your side, not behind you, out to the side, right? Leg comes through, hips come down, coming down to your elbow, and then down to your back. And then we can bring that weight down and then go ahead and you can relax. Thank you. So, you're gonna notice hopefully the entire time, or most of the entire time that Coach Cool was moving, he was keeping his eye up on the weight. So as you're moving through this, you wanna look up, look up, and watch that weight. It's gonna make the movement if it's a newer movement for you, um, a lot easier to be keeping an eye on that weight than trying to stabilize that weight while you're looking forward and still trying to think about how you're gonna move your body. So keep your eyes up on that weight. We're gonna be doing four minutes of Turkish get-ups and we're gonna do two per side and then switch sides. So we're gonna be starting in about 30 seconds. If you're good with Turkish get-ups, you got four minutes to go, hopefully you can get eight to 10. If Let's go to school here. If this is newer for you, stick with me for the first few. I'm gonna be yelling out or calling out what I'm doing and where I'm pausing, so hopefully you can stay with me. We're gonna be going in about 10 seconds. I'm starting on my right-hand side. So right knee is up. I'm bringing this weight into my chest. We're going in three, two, one. I'm gonna press up and come up to my elbow. Straighten my arm. Hips come up, knee comes back. I'm gonna sit up, and then I'm gonna stand up. Reverse that order. Left knee comes down, arm out to my side. Leg comes through, hips come down. Down to my elbow, down to my back. We're gonna stay on this side. Back to my elbow, straighten that arm. Hips up. Knee back, go ahead and sit up, and go ahead and stand up. Again, trying to keep an eye on that weight. Left knee comes down, arm to your side, leg through, hips down. Down to your elbow, down to your back, and now we're going to go ahead and switch sides. I'm going to call it out one more time for you. First time on this left hand side. Left knee is up. Press up the weight of the left hand. Right leg's out at a 45 degree angle. 
Up to an elbow. Straight arm. Hips up. Knee back. Sit up. Stand up. Right knee comes back down. Arm goes out to your side. Keep an eye on that weight. Leg comes through. Hips down. Down to your elbow. Down to your back. One more time. Up to my elbow. Up to my hand. Hips up. Knee back. Sit up. Stand up. Right knee comes down. Arm to the side. Leg comes through. Hips down. Down to your elbow. Down to your back. Switch sides. Good. Two minutes in. You're on your own now. Take your time. Don't rush it, particularly if this is a newer movement for you. Remember to keep your eye on that weight. How you doing, coach? Man. About 90 seconds left to deal with me, or you just took off with Todd. That's awesome either way. We should be moving controlled on this movement, but our goal is four minutes of pretty much consistent movement. So I was bringing by the end of those eight reps, I think I just finished. I have the time for probably two or three more. Good old reps. This is a new movement for us. It's going to be super challenging. This is a pretty challenging movement for me as well, especially on my right shoulder, which is going to be a little bit tighter. So. Stay on it, eyes of that kettlebell are gonna help you guide it straight up to the ceiling, right over that shoulder joint the entire time. All right, less than a minute to go. Got a minute of rest coming up after this. Good. Just about 30 seconds. Another good rep or two. Last 20 seconds. Last 15. Here you go, 10 seconds. Six, five, Four, three, two, and rest it out. We're going to nice move it off, shake out those shoulders. All right. So we got a minute of rest, and then we got toe taps and plank jacks coming up. Look who decided to join the party over here. Good morning. Whew. Forty toe taps, ten plank drags. Many rounds to ten four minutes. Now we're on our toes. Now we're breathing a little bit. When we plank drag, fight that torso wiggle. Squeeze here. The more rotation you can fight, the stronger your core is going to get. Simple as that. Cool. If you're really interested in a stronger core, we also have ten minute app tap app videos. Yes, we do. So you can check those out. No equipment. Nothing's needed. Just you and a ten minute clock. So available on our channel for sure. This is coming up in three, two, one. Here we go, 40 toe taps. Each, each tap counts as one. If you've been sticking along with our videos for the past few weeks, um, recently Todd thought it was very funny that I said you can toe tap to a pillow. But since we've already talked about pillows today, you need to do your toe taps on a pillow instead of your weight. It's the same exact movement. Hopefully it has a nice pillow face with nice hotel creases. All right, time for your side. Remember, reach across the body. Make sure you're reaching across the body. Each one counts as one. Squeeze that core. All right, back into 40. I happen to be watching that exact segment, <laughs> and I laughed ridiculously loud for how not funny it was. <laughs> it's just like so not appropriate how funny I thought I it was. I didn't know why you thought it was so funny. I don't know. Whew. 
Right back on the floor. Opposite hand reach across. Feel those legs burning. Hang it on. Pump it up on two minutes. So Coach Cole was talking about not shifting, not letting our body shift when we're pulling that weight over from side to side. How do you try to prevent that from happening? Well, when you're in that plank position, you want to try to engage as many as your muscles as you can, meaning when you're in that plank position, squeeze your quads, squeeze your glutes, really crunch down on that nice tight core, and then when you start moving that weight from side to side, it's really gonna minimize the motion. You got about 90 seconds to go, and then we got a minute of rest coming up. minutes of this combo. And that's it, you're going to be done. Less than a minute to go. seconds. You got this. A minute of rest too is coming up. It's a lot. 15. it all kind of left your brain come just do it for the first one uh, and then you're on your own take your time you got 10 seconds to go when you're starting back on the right hand side five seconds right leg is up right knee is up press up on that right side here we go coming up to my elbow straight arm hips up keep an eye on that weight knee back sit up stand up reversing that order Left knee comes down to the ground, left arm out to the side. Leg comes through, hips down, down my elbow, and down my back. There he is. Remember, two per side. Good. Good. Last time for Turkish get ups. I love Turkish get ups. I think Coach Cole says he likes them a lot. Do you love them? I love how challenging they are. I also love how good they are for your shoulders. One of my, one of my workouts when, a couple years ago, if I came into the gym and I didn't have anything to do, is I would set a clock for a 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds I'd do one Turkish get up and I would do that 100 times. 
I, that's a workout I've never done. Um, <laughs> something you look forward to? Question mark? It's actually a lot of fun, and I'll tell you why. A Turkish get up doesn't take 30 seconds, it takes about 20, moving at kind of a steady pace, which means it's 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. So it's kind of just like a really long Tabata. And then you can zone out a little bit, kind of get lost in your thoughts. Or at least that's what I do. So, just over a minute. Well, luckily today we only have a minute and ten left of rep of Turkish get ups to go. If you want Not 78 reps. If you want us to make a video of every 30 seconds, one Turkish get up a hundred times. Leave it in the comments. Don't comment. I feel like you're making you gesture comment. <laughs> don't sway their opinion. <laughs> don't want it. If they want it, they want it. Here we go. 45 seconds. If you comment back, and I'm posting that video, and I'm very grumpy while I'm on camera for the entire thing. We'll say, yeah, uh, how is this different than any other workout? I'm not grumpy. I'm fine. I'm fine. 30 seconds. Oh, we want to do 100 turkey. Keep those eyes at that bell though, especially if our shoulders get a little bit tired and wiggly. Eyes up really gonna help you keep that weight right above your shoulder, which is the strongest point. Right in the center of that. 15 seconds. Here we go, last 10. 30 seconds of rest in five, three, two, one. One. All right, 30 seconds of rest, three minutes of work. We're gonna get you out of here. Fifteen seconds. I'll sign you up for things I don't want to do. I'm gonna start signing you up for things you don't want to do. Yeah? I'll find a workout you don't like soon. Five, four, three. Two, 40 toe taps, three minutes, a little bit faster this time, why not? Last three of the day. All right, here we go. Last three minutes of work, not even. You got about two and a half to go. Tapping in some core, you got this. All right. All right, hang in there. You're just about halfway with this three minute piece, you're almost there. I'm breathing here, right past that. Pretty strong today, that's all. That's all we asked for. Here you go, you got less, actually just about a minute, just about 60 seconds to go. Probably one more time through for both of these. seconds. You almost made it. Almost there. Finish this round. You're on at least at least this movement. So if you get 40 done, you get the floor for 10. You get 10 done, back up for 40. Finish. 
While moving today, please, that's a great goal. And in the middle of the workout, while we're breathing, no more need for any rest, not less than 20. Hang it on there. Stay up, stay tapping. The last few reps are the most important training workout. Five, four, three, two, and that is time. Bring it down. Kick it out. Woo, oh, All right. Hi. 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 Yes. Yes. All right. Nice job, everybody. Nice job, Brooklyn. You were a good girl. Yeah. You were a good girl over there. <laughs> nice job, everybody. So, that was the first time. This is workout number 15 for these 40 minute workouts. First time we've done Turkish get ups. Hope that you were into that. <laughs> Um, so, if you're still with us, again, please do me a favor, like this video and then subscribe to the channel. We're working pretty hard to try to grow it, so it makes a really big difference. Uh, all the workout gear that you see us wearing, that's all available online at the outfit store, so uh, there's links in the bio, so you can go see it. The dumbbell shirt's my favorite. Dumbbell shirt is so cool to wear. Yeah. We have a lot. <laughs> I do a fun stuff. Um, so, besides this 40 minute workout, we have 20 minute body weight workouts and then 10 minutes of abs, abs, abs. With that being said, I'm Coach Todd, I'm Coach Paul, this is Brooklyn, and we're gonna see you next time. Take care. Peace <laughs> out, outfit is out. Outfit out. We out of here. What do you think, Brooklyn? Is that a good sign off? We need more out puns. Is that a good sign off? We need a good sign off, so if you got one for us.